Hi everyone, it's Pete here. In this video, we're gonna be having a look at my Tamiya racing truck here, which is on the TTO1 Type E chassis. I've tested this fairly extensively on-road and off-road. I'm gonna be sharing my thoughts about it. I've also done a speed test, a little upgrade, and then another speed test to see if the upgrade made any difference. I've also had a look at how the TTO1 chassis compares with the TTO2. First of all, I've tested it in a car park with the standard kit wheels and tyres. It's worth saying that mine's got a 4,600 kV brushless motor in, so it won't be this quick with the silver cam motor. All of these tests are with a 2S LiPo battery. And the standard tyres do work quite well on a hard surface, or they do slide a fair bit, so it's good for drifting and sliding around. Now you may notice an alarming grating noise coming out of the truck in various parts of this video, and I'll be resolving that later. run it on these gravelly bits which is all very good fun but the chassis did fill up with little stones now while this is all very good fun even after only about half an hour of running it like this the tyres had about half the amount of tread on they did to start with so I needed a cheaper alternative what I did next was to put some cheap Chinese wheels on which had rally block tyres Did have more grip on the tarmac and with this brushless set you could still slide it around a bit. And this was really good fun and the reassuring thing was that there's more tread on these tires and when they do wear out they're very cheap. The main thing I was concerned about was turning this over and ruining the lovely body. Oops. Next thing I tried was these wheels with drift tires. I think the chassis is pretty good for this but it's let down by my phenomenal lack of talent had a go and I think that's the main thing. Bear in mind I'm driving one handed because I've got the camera in the other hand. That's my excuse. You can definitely hear that grating noise I was talking about in these shots. So this is all good fun but I think you can do with some slightly flatter ground. Next up, I took it to the local golf course with the rally block tyres on. I have to say it coped better than I thought it would and the bonus here is that if it rolls over it won't do any damage. That was really good fun on these dusty bits but the problem I found out later when I was doing some maintenance is that the dust gets into the rear gears so I really need to find out how the dust gets in and to seal it up a bit better. I found the best place to run this was either on the short grass here where the golfers hit the ball with the stick in the first place. Or here where the golfers carefully use the stick to poke the ball in the hole. So it runs really well on the grass but hopefully none of it went in the chassis. Oh. Next up is the obligatory speed test. So 30 miles an hour is pretty quick, not quite as quick as I thought it would be with that motor. I think it's mainly down to the low gearing but then there's that pesky noise I was talking about earlier. So I did a quick test back at base. Turns out it's a plastic prop shaft vibrating against the chassis. So I put in this upgraded metal one. Let's see if it solves the problem. Yes, that did the trick, so I went to see if it made any difference to the speed test. So now 33 miles an hour, not a bad improvement. I was saying I think this is quite low geared really because my TLO one with speed gears and it goes over 40 miles an hour and that's got a lower KV motor so you could easily get this over 40 miles an hour if that's what you wanted to do. Not really what this is designed for but I thought I'd try a few little jumps. It is 
notably quieter with the new prop shaft. So I'm filming using the camera on the end of the pole and the main thing to remember is not to drive the RC into the camera. A little bit of repainting needed here. Like I was saying earlier, this does collect a lot of stones in the chassis. So it runs really well. Let's have a quick look how the TTO1 chassis compares with the TTO2. So we've got the TTO1 on the left and the TTO2 on the right. And as you can see, they're pretty similar. I'd say that because of the way the differentials go in, the TTO2 is a bit easier to build. You look at the underside and you can see the TTO1 has got those holes in the chassis so it does collect gravel a bit more readily. Now looking at the ride height, the TTO1 is about 15mm off the ground and it's difficult to make it much higher than that because of the way the suspension arms rest on the chassis. With the TTO2 it's a bit easier to adjust the ride height and mine's about 20mm off the ground. Now it might just be because it's newer but the TTO1 seems to have less play in the steering than TTO2. My TTO2 has got this Camtech chassis cover which is good for keeping the grit and dust out. Now you can get one of these for the TTO1 but don't forget you've got those holes in the bottom where stuff can get in. Looking at the battery compartment the TTO1 has got these mouldings which means you can only really use a round edge battery pack. The TTO2 battery compartment lets you use square edge batteries like LiPos. So in a nutshell I think the TTO1 is really an on-road chassis and it's got nice precise steering. The TTO2 on the other hand is a bit better off-road and it's easier to maintain. If you want more detailed information of the TTO1 versus the TTO2, then Mark Bryan did a good video a while back. That's about it for this one. A very big shout goes out to Pete at CWO1 Creations who got me this kit. Thank you, Pete. I'll need to do a little bit more run footage. Please like and comment and all that. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.